So one of the key principles to DevOps is that you build it and you own it. Microservices started out as a way for a team to move faster, right? But the, owner, but the burden of ownership is getting higher and higher in the distributed systems because your team talks to other teams and the other teams have their own dependencies and all of them are operating independently. So you don't talk to your partner teams day to day. Over time, they made their own infrastructure choices, they develop new toolings, they optimize their packages and their services in a way that works for them and for all their customers, not necessarily for you. You know vaguely what they are doing and what you depend, them, uh, depend on them for. However, when things are on fire, you, you don't know who to reach out to anymore. And what we learned is that when companies are smaller, this issue is much more manageable. And when your companies get bigger, it becomes very hellish in order to manage everything and operating a microservice at scale. So when I started out at Amazon about like five years ago, um, that's when Amazon, that's 10 years after Amazon first broke their monolithic application and moved to a microservice uh, style architecture. So my best friend and I were deskmates, and he was super nervous about getting on call. So the day before he got on call, he talked to all the engineers on the team trying to collect all the exhaustive lists of failure conditions and relevant contacts that he might need to make over the weekend in order to get it through. So what he ends up doing is making a collection of wiki pages of documenting all the services and dependencies that he ever need. So that's Friday. Saturday, we're having brunch. He got paged. He ran into the office and didn't come out until 9 p.m. What happened is an upstream of config change broke hundreds of services on the company, including ours. And it took hours and hours for everyone to figure out where the breakage was. So the, the team that owns the source of that change patched it and everyone went to bed that night. Sunday, 2 a.m., he got paged again because the patch didn't work. <laughs> so he had to go back to the office and manually change the service and made another patch so that to restore partial functionality of the service that we own so that we're not failing all of our SLAs. So this story shouldn't be foreign to any of you sitting here. It's probably coming enough, right? And that's the cost of adopting a microservice or service style architecture. As things become more interconnected and you, you're losing visibility into what each others are building all the time. And slowly, everything just become more loosely coupled and you don't know what's going on anymore. That's bad when you have things on fire, but even for day to day, it's not great. Because as your company grows bigger, there are other concerns as a service owner that you care about. For example, compliance and security. Cost is another new, uh, new kid on the block. You're, I don't know if you have a FinOps person or financial analyst talking to you and asking you, why is your service spending so much money? Why are you paying so much money to AWS? Can you live without this? Right? So without service, clear service ownership, there's a lot of issues on the company strategy side that cannot be executed. With different teams only in their independent tooling, independent infrastructure, that means as a company, you are losing on pressures, saving opportunities, either on your licensing cost or a coherent uh, infrastructure provisioning strategy. And more importantly, without clear ownership and when it com comes to time for on-call, everyone just gets stressed. I don't know about you, but the next two weeks for my friend and I, we were both very gingerly at work. So the next feature, whatever thing that we're building, we're not that excited because you know, of the weekend experience. So as a result, service owner really becomes the front and center for all the communication channels. Everything uh, needs to go through them, right? Because your FinOps person, although they really want to cut your bills in half, they cannot make that change themselves. Your AppSec engineer want you to get rid of the open source dependencies you're currently using because some of the engineers on your team thought that was fun. 
they cannot make the change. You have to. And perhaps and there is a, a whatever. Uh, your SREs is calling you out because you didn't set up monitors, you don't have SLOs, and you're getting close to your error budget, you're about to breach it. So they want to talk to you about making certain changes in order to meet the target. So it's two hours here, three hours there. You have to talk to multiple people in the company. And as a result, you're not working. You're not building features anymore. Right now, the solution many of our customers adopt is have an internal system. So on the manual side, it's usually a spreadsheet. Uh, M or project manager may go around the team across the company, do a quarterly audit, and say, hey, this is the team ownership information, this is metadata. These are the failover mechanism and the documentation. Everything is in place. OK, good. This team's good. And then they repeat the process every quarter. That's really not a good idea. Because the whole point of microservices is that you build really quickly. And then as engineers, you might make a decision to split your service into two or more subservices, because that's more nimble. And um, perhaps when things break, you don't have to be, be paged anymore. So that person's job quickly becomes hellish. So from 100 records that they have to ma maintain their spreadsheet, it suddenly become 2,000 records the next day. So not great. Another approach, you want to build a dynamic system. That was all the pipes tap into all the existing systems and uh, monitoring data that you have. So everything is updated in real time. And you want a communication platform so that everyone involved in the decision making process can see the service metadata and the service context. What do you need for that? You need a UI, a backend database, and the maintenance of that backend database, and multiple pipelines that talk to each other, uh, talk to all the systems that are relevant. So that's very expensive. So I'm really excited today to tell you that we have a solution for you. We uh, at Datadog are building a real-time service catalog that's built on top of the service topology and real-time performance metrics that you're already getting from our APM tool and from dashboard. Service catalog gives you a bird's eye view of all your services across all your environments, all in real time. So you, you can see the top vulnerability risk, the top reliability risk, all in the same place. And that significantly shortened the communication overhead between the service owner and the stakeholder. As an SRE, perhaps this is the dashboard you come to in order to kick off your workflow. As a security engineer, again, pull the top 10 services that are using log4j, and talk to those service owners, make a script to call the POC. How you do that? We uh, allow users to manage their service metadata through YAML files. So you can list the owner, the run book, and other documentation, and other relevant service metadata in the same place. And you see that side by side with your performance metrics. The benefit of that is for dependency management. So for example, if you suspect that your upstream dependency is experiencing a performance issue, instead of going to their dashboard, going to their service page, and ask the person who's on that team, what you do when in a world where you have service catalog is you move one row up, click on that service, and see their owner information and their service metrics dashboard all together and you can decide, you know, if you want to call them, Slack them right there. That's a Slack integration handle. Another key risk in a distributed style system is deployment. So before, when you broke something, you probably just impact yourself. You have a two days of really, you have two bad days, and then nothing really happens. But today, if you break something, you break things for everyone. So before you deploy, you want to know the immediate uh, effect of that deployment and by looking at your upstream and downstream dependencies. That's another thing that we display in real time through Service Catalog. So to summarize, uh, Service Catalog gives you a real-time knowledge base for all of your services across all your environments so you are able to know everything there is to know about your services. And we're closing the gap.
Oh, not that. Uh, <laughs> so there's one more thing. Uh, if you are interested in the beta, uh, to get started, you can talk to your CSMs, and they can talk more about onboarding. Thank you.